What would you do if you looked up your hometown on Google Street View and you couldn't find it? Google says it's collected more than 170 billion images from 10 million miles across the planet, but there are still many unmapped parts of the world. Tonight, you're going to meet a man who took matters into his own hands. With just one click, Google Street View can transport you to just about any location, all from the comfort of your couch. And yet there are still some places that remain largely inaccessible to the virtual traveler. It's generally accepted that um, coverage usually begins from the United States and Western Europe of some of these products, and then it gradually spreads across the rest of the world. And the pace at which that happens can be really slow. We are becoming increasingly dependent on location and navigation tools from everyday service delivery to public health and safety, more so over the last couple of years. Enter Tawanda Kanhima. When the native of Zimbabwe tried to find his hometown Harare on Google Street View, the on-the-ground imagery wasn't there. I was having dinner with friends and my friend's dad asked me to show him my mom's house on the map. And, um, you know, we all have the habit of looking up our home. The first thing we pick up a map. And so for me, that's something I had done before. And I knew that I could not find my hometown on the map. This was something that probably many people experience. And um, I wanted to know what I could, I could do about it. Kanhima took action. He reached out to Google. They loaned him a 360 camera and off he went to Zimbabwe. I spoke to the team, told them about Zimbabwe and you know, 14 of the countries in the Southern Africa region that I thought would make an interesting place to represent on this platform. And so I borrowed a camera and went back home to Zimbabwe for the first time to do a pilot shoot where I just held the camera out of the window of my brother's car and we drove around the city and I came back. We had collected about 24 to 30 miles of footage. But he didn't stop there. A documentary crew teamed up with him and captured his journey of literally putting the street scenes across Zimbabwe on the map. I was able to go back to Zimbabwe and do a larger scale project that took two weeks and covered about 2,000 miles of highways and attractions. When I went back to Zimbabwe to do this mapping project, I was doing this alone. And a week after I got to Zimbabwe, Google sent a film team that was documenting the behind the scenes of this mapping project. They snapped panoramic views of Zimbabwe's cities and attractions via car, speedboat, bicycle, helicopter, and on foot. They were able to capture, you know, some of the solutions that I'd come up with to mapping different locations, whether it was at Victoria Falls, flying over the waterfall in a helicopter and capturing 360 footage using a speedboat on the Zambezi River, which forms the Victoria Falls or just cycling across the Victoria Falls Bridge. So some of those were ways to demonstrate how we could leverage this technology in unconventional places to really try and capture this imagery and improve the representation of those places. For Kanhima, it was about the opportunity to showcase all of the world. A map is never final. People are constantly adding more context, more perspectives, more adding more voices towards the representation of these places. And so for me, it feels like just a gentle, gradual improvement in the digital coverage of places in Africa. Making sure communities like his hometown in Zimbabwe are represented in the digital space. It felt empowering to be able to make that difference, to be able to make that connection and really make a difference in terms of the digital representation of my hometown and my country. It used to be that you look at a map and it is what it is. But as more people pick up these technologies, more people picking up these tools, maps become a confluence of perspectives. The most compelling thing for me is hearing from people who are using these images to help share a memory from you know, their lives. I hear from people who say, I was able to show my daughter the home in which I grew up. I was able to show my kids the hospital in which I was born. And um, just being able to hear that, that you, you know, people are using maps, not just for navigation and finding places. They're using maps to make a connection. They're using maps to tell stories. And that story is just a bit more complete thanks to Kanhima.
some fascinating topography there. Our thanks to our friends at GoodMorningAmerica.com for bringing that story to us. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.